Uh, well, uh, let's say a bit more about um, exceptions in generics. Um, uh, first of all, um, a generic type may not be a subtype of throwable, um, either directly or indirectly, of course. Um, so here we've got a direct example here. We've got gn of t, and the generic type there, extending throwable. Well, that's not allowed. And similarly, the line below is not allowed because it's indirectly a uh, subtype of throwable because uh, um, IO exception, of course, is uh, throwable. So uh, both of those are not allowed and will give a compiler error. And if you're wondering why that is, it's because it is pointless to allow that sort of thing because both GN um, of string and GN of integer would have uh, the same erasure. So it's the same, would look exactly the same at runtime. And uh, so something like uh, if you try and catch either gn string or catch um, gn of integer, um, you'll find that they produce exactly the same code, those two statements. So you're not getting anything from this uh, generic side here. It produces exactly the same code. And um, so uh, catch, of course, only works with uh, non generic classes, which is a good thing really, because it would complicate matters if it wasn't the case. Um, uh, that's because there's only non-generic stuff available at runtime, and it's got to do with lots of runtime type work. Now, um, you cannot catch a type parameter, as I've already mentioned, for uh, basically the same reason. It's not not something that's available at runtime. However, of course, you can throw a type parameter as long as it's uh, it is of type throwable, and it's permitted to have a bound of throwable as well. So, um, here's the example here. Um, we've got this generic type with a type parameter of t, which extends exception, and uh, here we've got this method m. Uh, which can throw a T, throws T, and uh, there it is, the only statement in it throws EX. And we've got to do it this way, we can't say throw new T because we can't say new T, so what we have to do is pass T in to M instead like that. So it throws X, which is a type T, and that's the way you have to do it. If you're going to do this, which I wouldn't recommend, but if you're going to, that will work. And here we got this class test, which um, has got this uh, instantiates this with um, IO exception, like that. Uh, uh, constructs a, a new instance of GN, IO exception, like that. And down in here and test it, we're going to try and run it. So we just call GN.M, we've got to pass uh, something into this, and um, it have to be new IO exception. Or, of course, you could have a subclass of IO exception, that would work as well. And uh, that would, of course, uh, throw that exception. And so, if we try and catch um, that exception that's been thrown, you can print out court if you want to, I suppose. And uh, that works.